Hello, so today what I'm going to do is show you how to hook up one of these infrared transmitter receiver pairs that you can get. <clears throat> really affordable and they're lots of fun to play with. And uh, what I'm going to use today is a Teensy 3.1 hooked up to a Patent Robotics motherboard. And of course I've got a connecting piece of wire to hook everything together. I should say I've already put the battery in this thing, so we are set and ready to go. So the other thing you have to do uh, before you can get this guy to go is download the appropriate library. Uh, the easiest way to do that <clears throat> is simply to go to Google and then type in um, irremote.h so you can find it. And it should pop up as probably the first choice, this GitHub location. Okay, And from there, click on it. And then what you want to do is you want to download that. And you can see I've already done it. But download the, uh, the files. And it will come down as a zip file. Okay. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to go to Sketch, you want to include a library, and then you want to, I'll go ahead and click that, oh. and then what you want to do then is add a zip file, and then you're going to find it uh, probably in Downloads, I imagine is where it went, um, <clears throat> and go ahead and install it. So once you've done that, you are set and ready to go. Okay. And what I want to do is start off with just a simple little demo. And they have some really wonderful ones here. So I'm going to go to examples. And I'm going to go, you can't quite see it on my screen. But down here I've got IR remote. And then from there I've got, let me see if I can move this over so you can see it. I'm going to go to examples. And I'm going to go, it's unfortunately off your screen. It's down here at the very last one, IR remote. And then I'm going to go to, from there, I'm going to go ahead and just jump to the IR Remote Receive Demo, which is a nice place to start. And we'll close this off. And you can see we're all set up. Uh, the very first example has this thing hooked up to pin 11. And there's no reason why we can't do that, just to play with it. So I'm going to go ahead now and plug this guy into pin 11. So the first thing I want to do is plug this in appropriately with the signal going to the lightest color wire, the yellow wire. And then I'm going to plug it into my motherboard on pin 11, like so. And uh, we should be ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and load this up and see what happens. All right, I'll pause while it's loading. OK, so it's done uploading. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a try here. Let's open up the serial window. And let's put this on screen someplace where you all can see it. All right, grab my handy dandy control. And let's hit a few values here. One, oh, it looks like if you hold the button down, it might error out, but that's okay. We'll use that. Uh, we can play with that. Looks like the individual things all have a, whoops, that was an error. It's a fast response. If you hold your finger on the button for very long at all, it goes into this error. But I think what I'll do is I'll take advantage of that and whip up some code that, because uh, I'll be wanting to drive a robot that just uh, every time it sees the error, it uh, repeats the last number that it sets. So let me go ahead now and uh, pause this and get set up, and we'll take this code and we'll uh, modify it to fit our needs. So I'll be right back. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. Um, the first thing I want to do is, right now it's outputting this hexadecimal format, which is fine. But let's look at this code real quick and, and see what actually is happening here. So the, we do have to include the library, which makes this all go. Uh, we've set the receiver pin at, at 11. We can choose another one, but 11 is perfectly fine. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and define the, the object, which is going to be working with this. And of course, the, the, uh, the data collection. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up uh, the various pins and make sure everything is set up and working. A little message that says if everything is correct. Um, we go down to the loop. And it's really simple. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to move my head around. My camera is right in front of my face here. Um, <clears throat> We determine whether or not there's something in the buffer ready to be loaded. If there is, well then, hey, okay, it's got results. What are they? And it's going to go ahead and print them. And it's going to print them into a hexadecimal format. What I want to do right now is actually, if 
for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that hexadecimal format thing. And let's just play with it and see what the decimal values are. So I'm going to load this up real quick. Whoops, I did not want to do that. I'm going to load this up real quick. Oh, it's going to force me to. Hold on, let me pause for a second. Well, that's a bit bizarre. My uh, <clears throat> image capture is causing my mouse to shift slightly off to the left, which is kind of unusual. So we'll just have to deal with it for the moment. So if I go ahead and upload this, <clears throat> what we should be getting now is displays of just the integer values. And if I come on over here and use my remote, you can see that each individual integer gives us a unique number. And there's that error. So if I go ahead and hold the button down, I get a repeating error, but a reproducible number. So I think, again, like I said, we're going to take advantage of that. So what I'm going to do now is create a little function that is going to uh, break these numbers down and tell us what they are. And uh, we'll build it from there. So give me a moment. Let me add some code to this, and I'll be right back. Hello. So that took a little while because what I did is I entered or pressed this button for every single digit and then wrote down the number that was generated for every one and then wrote a little program that can actually then uh, interpret those numbers. And let me show you what I've got so far and then we'll build one more function down to this. So I did add a couple of, uh, <clears throat> well, first off, I renamed this, okay, so I don't overwrite everything. So it's now called My IR Demo and I'll post this web. Uh, this code, I'm sorry. And uh, so I added a couple of variables. I created an integer variable that I'm going to use to store the number that I collect from the receiver. And I actually created a string variable that I'm going to use because I'm going to have this thing output strings uh, as it uh, converts each individual number into a unique identity. And if we go on down, um, nothing new here. So I redid this code a little bit. I commented out the, uh, the display of the IR value. And then what I've done is I've gone to, decided to go ahead and put the results.value into this variable IR value, which I created as a global. Threw in a small delay just to make it a little more stable. And then what I've done is I've wrote a, uh, uh, a non-void function. And I'm going to come down here and show you. So it's going to pass IR value down. And if we slide down here, here it is, okay? So remember that value, that number that uh, gets generated, gets carried into this non-void function called decode, decode. I create another variable here, the answer value. And what I do is I just check each individual combination. Like I said, I entered them one by one by one. So these are the numbers, one, two, three. And what it's going to do, it's going to look for that integer. And if that integer does, in fact, match up, it's going to output a string, 1. It's going to put it into this variable. On and on down the line until I have all the different, um, all the different functions of the keypad. Ultimately, if it isn't any of those, the default is going to be, so it's not, it's not a number if it's that, just that string of Fs it's going to then tell the variable, answer variable, that it's in fact repeat, okay? And it's gonna return those uh, variables every time, and it comes back up to the loop, okay? So that returns it into this position, which means that working variable one is now going to be displayed, and we'll reproduce this loop. So let me go ahead and load this up. I'll pause it. And I'll be right back. All right, let's see if it's working. So if I push the individual numbers, it seems to be, oh, there we go, see that? If you hold it, you'll get that repeat, 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 okay? But everything else seems to work just fine. Zero, star, pound, okay? So this is gonna be my directions. All right, everything is good. So let me add one more piece of code and uh, we'll finish this off. So I'll see you in a second here. Okay, so this actually works pretty well. Uh, what I've done now is I've created another string variable. I'm gonna call it working2. Probably could have come up with better names, but we'll go with that. 
And what I've done now is I've taken an in the loop. I've made a decision here. So it still collects the variable working one as it did down here with the, uh, the non-void function. But then I say to, well, if working one is not equal to repeat, then working two is equal to working one, okay? So it's gonna switch that value anytime it isn't repeat, all right? But if it is repeat, it skips that step. So it just keeps printing out working two. So the first time it changes, uh, unless it sees a repeat, it'll just keep playing the same number over and over and over again. And you can see I've already loaded it. And if I push a one, a two, a three, up, a four, a five, but if I hold it, okay, it'll just keep hitting it. Which I think is what I wanted to do if I'm gonna run a robot. I wanna be able to just say, turn right, and it's gonna to continue to turn right until I say, well, until I let up my finger, which case it would probably stop, or until I give it another direction, okay? So this does actually pretty much exactly what I want it to do, which I think is really cool. I did want to show one more thing in these last few seconds. Uh, let me set it up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just grabbed a couple other uh, remotes and I just want to show you how really amazingly uh, diverse this thing is. So I'm going to go back to examples. <coughs> I'm going to pull up the, that, uh, that first example we had, the IR received demo. Okay, and I'm just going to load it up as is without any changes. And I've grabbed a couple of different controllers. This is actually off of a Wowie uh, walking dog. This is off of a, a TV set. <clears throat> and uh, they all, you can work out the same, you know, basic strategy with any of these devices as soon as it loads here. Uh, perhaps I'll pause it just for a second. All right, so here I've got my uh, TV remote, and you can see that um, I get the same basic thing. It keeps repeating if I hold the button down. It only takes a split second, but nonetheless, all these digits have a unique ID. So I could certainly build something using the same basic strategy that uses the Sony remote, and even this uh, the Huawei thing. Um, if I click the individual functions for steering the dog, they all work out just fine, okay? So you could definitely use this thing for a number of different applications and a number of different IR remotes. You don't have to use the, the one that comes with it. So hopefully that was useful, and I'll see you again soon.